Hi guys, today we're going to talk about creating a Lightroom identity plate. So here what I have is my personal branded logo. It's going to help to add a look of professionalism to your version of Lightroom if you have your own identity plate rather than the custom Lightroom text in the top left hand corner. So if we jump over to Lightroom, you can see here I've already put a version up in my top, hand, top left hand corner. If I right click and go to identity plate, I can change this back to Lightroom only, click OK. Now for most of you, that is what you will see if you have not created your own personalized identity plate. So we're now going to replace that with a graphic of our choosing. So I've got my logo here. Currently it's on a black background. I don't want that. I want it on a transparent background. So ideally, if you've created your logo in either Illustrator or Photoshop, whether it's vector art or pixel based, you should be able to, providing you still have the original file, be able to hide the background so that you can get your logo on a transparent layer. That's what you want. So we're going to merge down our visible, uh, merge the visible elements of this at the moment. As you can see, I had a whole heap of uh, unwanted layers there and I still got some, so I'm just going to throw them in the rubbish bin. I don't need those. And I'm going to call this merged logo. Currently, one way of cropping down might be to try and select out your um, your logo like this, uh, trying to get it around the edges and then cropping. However, that is not a particularly accurate way to do it, and there's a much quicker way. So let me show you that. If you come up to image trim. You can now, based on the transparent pixels around the edge, top left, bottom and right, if we click OK, Photoshop will do the hard work for us and trim it in nicely. Absolutely perfect. Real time saver there. So the next step for me is I'm actually going to increase the size of the text Anthony Turnham Photography to match the height of the AT because I just feel by the time I've shrunk that down to fit in Lightroom, it's going to be borderline unreadable, particularly the thin Anthony Turnham here. So what I'm going to do is just show my black background. I might just change that actually to something uh, grey so I can actually see the edges of my um, canvas here. So I'm actually going to create more space for myself over on the right hand side because as I increase the size of this text it's going to want to grow. So by clicking over here we're going to grow out to the right and let's, based on percentage, let's add another 30%. So let's go to 130%. That should be enough, I would think, to expand this. So I'm just going to go select the text. And I'm now going to go Control T and transform that. So by holding the Shift key, I'm constraining the growth of that to vertical and horizontal at the same ratio. Now I just want to get this the same height and width. So I'm going to, just going to go with this at the moment and I do need to grow my canvas slightly more. So I'm going to go image canvas size and grow to the right and let's just go throw in 140 because we know that's going to be bigger than what we've got. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it's cropped off Anthony Turnham. Ooga. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make the canvas larger. So let's go to image canvas size and grow the canvas to the right. So select the width, select our anchor to be the middle left point so it's going to grow out to the right as we make this larger and let's just throw in an arbitrary bigger number here which is basically going to give us enough breathing space to grow our text let's select the text here let's copy it let's paste it and we're going to grow that we're going to hide our initial our original logo and we're just going to grow this you can hold the alt key so it will grow out proportionally from the middle um, or if you let go of the alt hit key and just hold the shift key you'll constrain the ratio which is what you want so that it's not warping you hold the shift key 
I'm going to bring it up to the top. Well, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to bring it to the bottom. And I'm happy with that. And once, once you're happy with your resizing, just hit enter. Perfect. Now I'm going to re-show my original logo and just delete that first um, text there. So I'm going to come down to the correct layer, hit delete, and now I'm left with my branded logo on the left and the text to the right, and they're all the same height. Nice. I'm going to reuse that trim tool. So let's come up to image, trim, OK. Now the next thing we need to do is consider the size of this. As you can see, we're at 8.33%. This logo is massive. So let's resize that to what Lightroom expects, which is a 40 pixel high image. The other thing I'm going to do is this will appear slam to the left of the screen on Lightroom. And I just want to give it a little bit of forced breathing space. Um, but I will do that once I've resized it. So let's go image image size. Now we want image size, not canvas size, because canvas size will actually crop off the existing without the image without resizing it. Whereas this image size will actually resize the image for us. And we know the height that Lightroom expects on the version CC is 40 pixels. So let's resize that. Zoom in to 100%, which is where we are here. If we reshow the background, we can see what our logo is looking like, and that's pretty much how it's going to look in Lightroom. And I'm going to go to canvas size again and just add some extra pixels to the left hand side. And currently we're at 255 pixels. I'm going to come up to 275 pixels. That will give us 20 pixels popped on the end there, and we're going to save it. So hold Shift, Control, Alt, and S. That will bring you to the Save for Web dialog. We're going to save it as a PNG. PNGs are brilliant for reserving, preserving the transparency. Hit Save. Done. We've got one already called Light, Lightroom Identity Plate. We're going to save that name there. Hit Save. doesn't matter what you call it, but obviously call it something that's meaningful to you. I usually use LR as my Lightroom abbreviation. Let's come back into Lightroom. I'm just using the Alt and Tab key to cycle through programs. So if we were in Photoshop, for example, we can then hit Alt and Tab together on Windows. And we've hopped over here into Lightroom. We right click on the identity plate, edit that identity plate. And from the drop down box, we want to personalize it. So choose Personalized and use a graphical identity plate. Locate that file. There it is. And we're just going to hit OK. And there she is. There she is. That's our logo dropped in. And in my opinion, all of a sudden, our version of Lightroom looks a lot more professional. And if we're showing imagery to clients and customers on Lightroom itself, um, then having a personalized logo in there looks so much more professional. Thanks ever so much for watching. Do me a favor, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, help me out. I'm just getting going with this channel and I'm really keen to share knowledge, my knowledge on Photoshop, on Lightroom, build a bit of a community. If I can get some subscribers going, I would really appreciate that and that will help me just keep producing some content. Thanks ever so much, guys. Cheers for watching, and I'll catch you in another video.